Water. Once it's out of the faucet and down the drain, it's pretty much out of sight, out of mind for the average New Yorker. But what you might not know is the water that leaves your home, along with the waste from other buildings, can be disastrous on a rainy day. And when it rains, it pours. Raw sewage, that is. Who wants to surf that wave of garbage? What you're seeing is what can happen when New York City's sewer system is overwhelmed with both the city's sewage and stormwater. On this day in September 2010, parts of New York City were ravaged by a particularly brutal storm that included two tornadoes, one in Brooklyn and the other in Queens. <laughs> oh, it's bad. Now, the city says it wants to invest $1.5 billion over the next 20 years in green techniques to fend off stormwater before it ever hits the system. New York's water woes are an historic problem, and one that is common in older cities in the Northeast and Midwest. In parts of the Big Apple, both human waste and stormwater are designed to drain into the same pipes, which then lead to the city's 14 water treatment plants. On a dry day, treatment sites will receive and treat about 1.3 billion gallons of water. On a rainy day, that can double. But during heavy storms, a surge of rain and sewage can overwhelm the system, potentially incapacitating treatment facilities and flooding streets and homes. To prevent that from happening, the overflow is diverted into nearby bodies of water. The process for diverting this combination of waste and rainwater is called a combined sewer overflow, or CSO for short. When it rains, the system overloads. So there are these 460 CSOs, and they are built in by design overflow points where this excess of water, combined rain and sewage, is released into the harbor and waterways like Newtown Creek and the Gowanus Canal. WSJ took a tour of one overflow discharge point with environmental group Riverkeeper. After a rainy day, Newtown Creek revealed a fetid mix of raw sewage and floating garbage. I'm already regretting that, that, uh, that when I left the boat, I didn't bring gloves because, you know, I, I don't want to, you don't want to touch water that's like this. And, and that's not the way it's supposed to be. The goal of the city's green infrastructure plan is to capture stormwater before it ever reaches the sewers. It's proposing several green techniques to convert hard surfaces to those that can absorb rain, including paving parking lots with permeable materials or installing green roofs to soak up water. The green infrastructure plan is um, a way to help us, though, deal with the problem at the source. And that's important because if you look at what they're saying about climate change, if you look at what we're looking at in terms of temperature and sea level rise, um, it's always going to rain. And from what we can tell, it's going to rain more. So. No matter how big you build a tank, no matter what system you build, if you're not capturing the water at the source, you're never ultimately going to be able to deal with it all. As a result, the city hopes to minimize CSOs and ultimately improve water quality. Some groups have been introducing their own such efforts, taking advantage of available tax credits. Michael Bloomberg has been really hot and heavy on green roof. We wanted to take a look at the benefits and um, we decided to vote for it. The condo board at One Union Square East recently chose to cover its traditional roof with a plant-based version. Besides its environmental benefits, the board said a green roof would visually enhance the property. The 14,000 square foot roof, one of the largest in the city, required about six flatbed trucks of soil and includes trees and shrubs that flower during different seasons, as well as carpets made of hardy sedum plants that have water-storing vegetation. All of these components work together to soak up rain and slow down runoff. We're doing our best to sort of replace what we've removed over time within the city by adding buildings and concrete and uh, things like that, which, which promote uh, stormwater runoff to certain areas. And by adding um, things that can help capture and store that, that water, we take uh, what was once an impervious surface uh, rooftop and we, we make that pervious. The condo received a $60,000 tax credit from the city for installing the green roof, which cost $330,000. New York Green Roofs estimates that during a three-inch rainstorm, the new roof will reduce runoff by 42%. Today, about 27 to 30 billion gallons of CSOs drain into New York's waterways annually. By shifting away from traditional gray infrastructure, such as holding tanks and tunnel systems to capture storm water, the city says it hopes to reduce combined sewer overflows by about 40 percent 
by 2030 and save money in the process. We'll save about two and a half billion dollars in uh, what would otherwise be public outlays for big tanks and tunnels that don't even give you the sustainability benefits that green infrastructure can. Open space, better air quality, increased property values. It's a really a great way to achieve more than one thing with your tax dollar. The effort won't be without challenges. New York City is currently teaming up with the State Department of Environmental Conservation to work out a plan that will ultimately involve agencies and citizens across the city. The environmental group Riverkeeper says while the plan is a great concept, it vows to keep the city accountable to ensure it achieves its goals. The trick is to do enough of it so that you actually achieve those goals for uh, the aesthetics of our waterways, for the habitat value, and for people who want to use the waterways for recreation. For The Wall Street Journal, this is Christina Suey.